Hello, my name is Anna Sorina Popa and I'm a classical pianist. I'm a Tai Chi, Qigong and meditation practitioner and a teacher. This video is part of a series that I've started on the exploration of uh, principles that come from these disciplines to piano play. Today, I'd like to talk about sitting, which is why you're so far away. Why? Because pianists sit for the majority of our training and our professional lives. We do our practices, our rehearsals, our concerts while sitting. And also the majority of our administrative life also happens in a chair. So aside from us, the only other category of people who sit as long as we do are the meditators are people involved in a spiritual discipline who dedicate the majority of their waking hours to the pursuit of self-development. So in terms of sitting hours, meditators and pianists are very close to being equal. Well, the most popular idea of med uh, meditation pose would be uh, something that comes from yoga with the log legs crossed, in a half or a full lotus um, with the fingers in a certain uh, uh, posture and with the eyes closed. But there are Taoist practices and branches of meditation who do their work sitting instead. So how do these meditators do it? Why are they able to sit for very long periods of time without rising in pain? So. Here's an, uh, an overview and some very, very broad points on the principles involved in sitting while meditating. Within Taoist practices, the comfort of the body is an important aspect because if the body is comfortable, then the mind has less to manage and is more easily able to turn inwards to explore various states of awareness. In meditation, the way to achieve this comfort is to align the body properly so that it does not excessively sway one way or another. And there are so many variations of this. There are three crucial elements involved in the alignment of the body. The head, the spine, and the legs. The legs of the meditator are always flat on the floor, parallel, with the knees more or less at a 90 degree, uh, give or take a little bit. The uh, body is balanced over the sit bones or the bottom of the pelvis. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can just sit on your hands for a moment and the place where you feel more pressure coming into your hands um, is the, the spot I'm talking about. That is the bottom of your pelvis. Those are the sit bones. The, um, so that's one alignment. The area in front of the thighs here, where the legs meet the body, is also softened so it can open a little bit. In order to sit up, the area around the inside of the thighs, where the legs uh, join the torso, is also soft and uncontracted. Sometimes this uh, is the position is described as allowing the legs to fall out of the hip sockets. For the meditator who wants to have endurance in their sessions, the spine is the key uh, that allows the body to balance over the sit bones. However, the spine is not perceived as a monolith. Instead, it has an anterior and a posterior side. The sides are balanced against each other on a pulley system. When the front goes up, the back goes down. When the back goes up, the front goes down. In this way, the spine starts having a little bit more space and the vert vertebrae separate slightly. Some of the adjustments necessary to do this particular thing are very fine, but the idea of balancing the up and the down is a good entry point, and I hope it will be very accessible to you as well. 
So for instance, when you collapse the spine, the back stretches, but the front collapses or is compressed. In order to correct it, it's not about pulling the back backwards. It's not about that, but it's about uncompressing the, the front and opening the front. So let's try this together a couple of times. Collapse the spine, and I'll see if with a little bit of attention to the front of the spine, you can unfurl yourself. Try again. Collapse the spine, and then see if you, from the front of the spine, you can just lift a little bit. Furthermore, aside from that, the head is also balanced over the spine and also is centered over the uh, pelvis so that it does not fall forwards or backwards. It makes a huge difference in terms of uh, the meditation uh, perception and, and experiences. So if we use the same ideas at the piano, perhaps, uh, perhaps the first question comes to mind, that comes to mind is, um, well, how much of the thigh would one use on the bench? Uh, for the meditator, the reason for which they sit at the front is so that the legs can support the front of the spine. Uh, and it pro they can provide stability so the trunk, trunk doesn't fall forward or uh, collapses. And because the spine and the legs are connected, sitting on the seat bones and using very little of the thigh um, allows the legs to stabilize the body the upper body. So try this with me. First, scoot yourself all the way as much as you can on the bench and <laughs> find out um, if you feel connected to the feet. In my case, I'm so short that I, I, I barely can touch the floor. Um, but even if I'm not, if I move forward a little bit, here's the question. Do you feel as connected to the to the floor, do you feel your legs easily? Do you do they help you support the body, or are you kind of pulling up from the center or from the bottom of the pelvis in order to keep yourself straight? And now, just as I did before, edge yourself forward little by little, and find out whether or not you can find uh, feel more support as you move forward on the bench. Does it provide you with an ease of movement, a possibility of movement? Does it feel uh, freer? Um, do you feel like the legs are supporting the spine so you don't have to hold yourself up? Th those are some things you can um, play with. Just remember to feel your body, not to just use your imagination and assume you will be feeling a certain thing because uh, then your exploration will not be as useful. So when sitting at the piano or not, it's always difficult to, to sit up straight, to maintain the balance of the body and the, the, for the spine to be um, opened. At the piano, this is much, uh, if you collapse the spine, it will be much more difficult to support the arms, to breathe, to go through an entire length, uh, lengthy practice session or a concert. You'll just get basically more tired. So in order to counteract the tendency to collapse um, little by little towards the keyboard, you can use this pulley system that will every now and then remind you to open up the front, not by pulling the back backwards, but simply by opening the front of the spine upwards. And finally, in terms of applications, the positioning of the head over the pelvis is very, very useful for pianists as well. Because if the relationship between the head and the pelvis is maintained, we can lean forwards without the middle of the spine collapsing or the neck closing. These are usually the two of, um, uh, sources of, of extreme pain in pianists. So, they can be counteracted by this simple postural adjustment. Therefore, if you wish to incorporate these ideas in your playing, then remember to keep your feet flat on the floor, even when you use the pedal, at the very least the heel on the floor. 
release the area of the hips and where the uh, legs meet the, the torso, balance the spine on the up, uh, on the uh, up down axis and front back, and keep the head over the pelvis. Of course, when we play piano, we will deviate from these points somewhat, but it's very useful to come to them, come back to them in practice again and again, um, because we can little by little improve and uh, keep these alignments a little bit um, more consistently. So as you practice, if you choose to practice this, just remember to be gentle with your body and with the adjustments you, use, you choose to try. Remember to release and to soften. So this is all I have for today. I hope it was useful to you. Please let me know if you have any questions by either contacting me at onapopa.com or with uh, leaving a comment uh, or a question in the section below. In the meantime, happy practice and a free and beautiful and open body to you. Until next time. Bye.